Hello and welcome back and today is going to be an interesting little video for some of us at least who are considering buying Synology hard drives and Synology hard drives do have arguably several differences over uh, third party hard drives on the likes of WD or Seagate because although they are at least the HAT5300 drives Toshiba MG drives with Synology firmware on board it is that firmware and its design that I really want to talk about a lot today because if you have been considering buying these drives for your NAS system or you've already got them in your NAS system, you may have one very you know, intriguing question about that firmware. And that is, Synology themselves do highlight this, that updating the firmware on Synology hard drives is considerably easier than third-party domestic drives. Why is that? Because Synology hard drives, when you put them in a Synology system, allow you to update the firmware without powering the device down. Normal hard drives, such as the WD Red series, would you would have to tower down the system, remove each of the drives, take them over to a desktop system connected, ideally via SATA or eSATA, although some docking stations can be used, connect it, download the WD firmware update tools, update the firmware per drive, take the drive back to the Synology NAS, get a new get the, the rest of the drives one by one and repeat that process. Now, doing so has several risks. When you take the drive and you carry it around, if you're not handling it right, you might drop it. You could use static um, damage to the drive. There's any number of things that can happen. Also, it could result in the raid on the NAS if a drive isn't put in correctly, or if a drive is accidentally removed when it shouldn't have. It can destabilize the RAID. It can force, uh, at the very best case scenario, uh, a RAID rebuild due to the degradation, or in the worst case scenario, complete dismounting of your RAID and damage. Therefore, Firmware updates from within the drive system and within the NAS without powering down the NAS is hugely advantageous. And therefore, when you do log in to a Synology NAS like this one with Synology hard drives, and then from there, you can have a little look at firmware updates, you're able to see that if there is a firmware update available, you can update the firmware on a hard drive without removing it and without powering down the NAS. However, what about if those drives are in a RAID? And what if these drives are in use? What happens then? Does it dismount the RAID? Does it do the drives one by one? Does it update the firmware while keeping the drives in the RAID? Now, unfortunately, I haven't got a mixed drive SHR environment set up. Because another thing I was wondering is, if you've got mixed drives of Synology and non-Synology drives and you update one, what happens? And that might be a follow-up video. But in today's video, what I'm going to do is set up a constant connection with this NAS, the 723. I'm going to connect to it over 10GBE using the 10GBE adapter, which hopefully is on screen. And after I've set up that constant connection using AJA, constantly connecting with the NAS, I'm going to update those drives. And when I update those drives, I'm going to see what happens. Because I'm sure the NAS will update the firmware but will it, up, let me, will it let me update the firmware when I'm connected to the device? And if it does, will it remove the storage pool in its entirety or drives individually? So let's crack on. I'm going to be as transparent as possible and include this in. So first things first, we want to make sure that we've got a constant connection over 10 GBE. So rather than using that 192 IP, we're going to switch to the 10 GBE connection on this device using IP169. So we're going to re-log in back into this NAS. Again, I could skip all of this, but I just want to make sure this video is as transparent as possible. We've got the storage manager there. We've got our drives there. We've still got the option to run the firmware update on those two drives. Simultaneously, while it's doing that there, we can see on uh, the Synology Assistant, there's our 723 on the 10G connection. And if we go into my network settings, we're able to see that we're connected via 10 GBE to Thunderbolt adapter there. That is the one that we are running on. On top of that, what we can do is go back into the Synology Assistant, right click. We're going to map a drive. We're not going to use an iSCSI here. Standard map network drive would be fine. And we're going to make sure that we choose a folder that actually lives on there. So we're going to go for this one here. If we go to the properties, we can see that this folder here is um, located on pool one. If we highlight it there, just hover over it, we can see where these files and folders are located. So again, find out more about them, where they live on the system. They're on volume one. And as you can see, volume one, if we come out there, volume one 
is located on the hard drive pool, those two drives there. So if we mount that drive, as we can see, so we go back into Synology Assistant, we'll go for the Multimedia Images and Tools, we'll mount that on S for Synology, go for that there, and that should allow us to now have the S drive listed on my range of available drives. So we're going to go back into my PC, and this should add the S drive shortly. Okay, so we've got it appeared on there on screen. Just took an extra few seconds to appear. There is the data there from within inside the NAS folder. There's the NAS folder there. We can come out, and there is everything that we want to see within that file and folder. So we've established that connection there. We've got that 169 IP. You can see it all listed there, all those mapped drives. So what we're going to do now is set up AJA here in the background. AJA is now going to connect with that file folder. We're going to go for something nice and small, just a 256 meg file. I'm going to leave the graph there. And now we're just going to leave that running in the background. Now it's worth highlighting. Oh no, we want a constant test, don't we? Run continuously. It's worth highlighting while it does this, because we're using OBS, we're not going to see those high speeds. So do bear that in mind. We're not worrying too much about saturating 10 GBE here. What we want to be able to see is, is the system going to be able to keep up when during the firmware update, does it dismount those drives? So now we've got everything in place to continue what we're doing. Let's go ahead and also in the background, we're also indexing files. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we update our firmware. And we're going to leave nothing here on the screen to see what happens. Because at the moment, these are the consistent performance stats we're getting. So let's go ahead and update our firmware. As you can see, it is highlighting that you should have your data backed up. Because remember, I'm doing this so you don't have to. Let's go ahead and update these drives and see what happens. And just look at live. Are we going to see a drop in performance? I can certainly hear the drives next to me on the ground. And now it's saying that the system needs to restart to apply these updates. So consequently, we can't really update the firmware because you can see the Synology drives are in use. The system needs to stop all services during the update to prevent application errors, something we kind of half anticipated. So as you can see, the system is going to need a restart. So firmware updates on these drives, although convenient so you don't have to remove them, clearly result in the system needing downtime or at least we'll have to shut down and boot up now originally what we were looking at was if you were only updating one drive unfortunately we're not able to simulate that as you cannot individually select drives but still nonetheless as beneficial as it might be for some users out there as we start to see that drop there as the system is now going to suspend access it's still nonetheless Good news for those of you that don't want to have to muck around individually updating firmware, but it still means that those of you that are going to be in constant access with the NAS and were hoping that the firmware updates on these drives may be gradual or at the very least would result in your system not needing to power down and power back on may be disappointed. So again, I'm going to continue talking to you while the system is still accessing the NAS as the NAS is restarting the layer there. Because I think although the 723 is a pretty quick NAS, it's going to be very interesting to see how it copes with this but for now I think I've rabbited at you for long enough let's just fast forward a little bit and just leave this running rather than me rabbiting at you the whole time while it's doing that actually I will highlight currently I do still have two drives currently accessible that have the older generation Synology firmware on board so before I go ahead and do any other tests at the end of this video, do go into the comments and just let me know what tests you think I should do to demonstrate the firmware updates on these drives. Would you like me to mix them into an existing array of other drives, of non-Synology drives, to see what happens during the firmware update? Perhaps would you like me to go ahead and have these older generation firmware Synology drives mixed in with these new drives that have had the latest firmware. Remember, whatever we do, we only get one shot at this. So make sure whatever we do, we do it right. So do let me know what you guys think in the comments will be the right course of action moving forward with the mixture of old and new firmware drives for you for you guys that are still wondering about what happens when you install the latest firmware updates. But as you can see, OBS has now had severed connectivity there. So the drive test so it still managed to maintain the connection for a while, but 
Right now, I've heard the NAS, the click down of those drives, and it does look like, as you can see, that for now at least, it has had to sever that connection. And that restart was enough to be a complete restart, not just a soft layer restart there of DSM. It clearly had to reboot the whole system. And indeed, there's every possibility, thanks to dynamic IPs, that our IP may have changed. Because as we can see there, the 723 has now disappeared from the available drives on the range there. But nonetheless, what we'll do now is we'll give the system just a little bit of time to reboot. And now I'm just going to fast forward to the completion of the reboot of the system just to show you what the drives will show you when the drives have had their firmware update. We're starting services now. So let's go ahead and maybe test. We've heard the beep. So now if we restart our testing, what's going to happen? It does seem as if uh, we've got a AJA has decided to crash on us, unsurprisingly. Um, let's go ahead and close that down. Let's see, has our IP changed? So we're looking at that. We're st they're starting the 10GBE service because obviously the 10G service is not the initial uh, network service there. It uh, does have to boot it like another device there. And the IP has remained the same, so we should be able to go back in and run AJA on that drive once again. Leave that running there. And yes, we're going to have that running there on the side while we go ahead and log into our NAS system there. Again, I was kind of hoping that the firmware update, um, as good as it is to have Synology firmware updates on board, it would have been nice to, you know, not to have the system have to reboot. Don't get me wrong, it's better to have that option to reboot them, but still, right now, as the system's only initializing right now, and I'm taxing the system quite substantially, having that slow boot sequence isn't a tremendous surprise. But if we go into the storage manager now, while the system's still booting up individual services, I might add, and therefore, we are kind of hitting this uh, system quite early doors, we can see that the firmware has indeed been updated there successfully, and therefore, Moving forward, we can go ahead and continue using our system. Yes, it's convenient about the firmware updates. It's just a real darn shame that the system does still need to reboot. And for those of you that are going to have much, much, much larger arrays, imagine that 60 bay NAS on all those firmware updates. That downtime might make a tremendous difference to you. And it would have been nice if drives could have been updated individually, but that may have provisioned that raid to potentially collapse. So nonetheless, there's good and there's bad. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, let me know in the comments. Again, I do have two more of these drives with old firmware. So let me know in the comments the experiment you want to see me do. And the most popular or most recurrent um, comment down there about firmware updates is the one that we'll perform here on the channel for you guys. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.